Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branshaw, and this is episode 10 in the series. Whoa, we're in the double digits already. Anyway, in this episode, we'll be looking at the hat character, which is also referred to as the caret symbol. In normal mode, we can use the hat character to jump to the first non-blank character on a line. For example, on this line, hitting hat will jump to the dash. Or on this line, hitting hat will jump to taco. Beyond one-off uses, where you want to jump past some indentation, I can imagine using hat in this way as a normalizing motion when recording macros. If you're recording a macro to be replayed over a bunch of different lines that need to skip past varying levels of indentation, the hat character would be a great way to do that. The idea here is similar to how zero is often used in macros to make sure the cursor is at the beginning of the line. Next, we'll look at how we can use hat to jump to the alternate file. For me, this is the most useful tip in this episode. The alternate file, as we learned in the episode on pound, is generally the previously visited file. We can jump to the alternate file by hitting control hat, but there's no need to do finger gymnastics here to find the shift key. Control 6 does the same thing. If I hit Control hat, I'm taken to the alternate file, which is last episode's file. If I hit Control hat again, I'm back here. That's because as we move to the alternate file, the file we are in then becomes the new alternate file, which allows you to toggle back and forth. This is a great way to move back and forth between a test file and an implementation file during a refactoring. Now, the reason I think this is better than the pound alternative besides it being a quicker to hit normal mode command, is that if I have a new unnamed file like this, I can still toggle back and forth between them. The next thing we can do with the hat character is split open a window with the alternate file. So there are a whole slew of window commands that you use control W to access. This one in particular uses the hat character to create a split with the alternate file. Hitting control W, control hat, I've now opened a split with this previously visited unnamed file. Let's quit that and carry on. Next, let's look at how hat can be used to jump to the last place you were in insert mode. In the episode on backtick, we saw how you can define and jump to marks using letters of the alphabet and the backtick character. It turns out that as we are going about our business in a session, Vim will set some special marks for us. It uses the hat character to mark the position where we were last in insert mode. So if I hit shift A to jump to insert mode at the end of this line, and then I escape and go up here, I can hit back tick hat to jump back here. This hat mark is used by the GI command, which jumps you to that position and then puts you in insert mode. This is handy for when you broke from some editing and then want to continue where you left off. So you can imagine I'm working on this JavaScript function and I'm trying to remember the name of some function that I imported. Was it adder or sum or, hmm, I'll just jump to the top of the file where my imports are defined and check what it was. Oh yeah, the function is adder. Then you hit GI, you're back in insert mode and you continue editing and that's that. Lastly, as we've seen with many of the characters, the hat character has a use in pattern matching. The hat character represents the beginning of a line in a pattern, which means the very beginning of the string being matched against, as well as places where there are new lines. One way we might use this in a JavaScript file would be to find all top-level const declarations as a way of navigating around. Since we probably have const declared all over our file, including the hat character at the beginning, allows us to just match on the ones without indentation. Splitting open a search, I can type hat const, and I match this one here, but not this other one that is nested in the function. That's it for this episode. There are a few other hat uses floating around that are more obscure. Go ahead and check out the help files for those. In the next episode, we'll look at the ampersand symbol.